Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part two of my regex character classes. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select begin, and scroll all the way down here to the regex characters part two. Now in this tutorial, we'll build on concepts learned from my regex characters cl character classes part one tutorial. I'll be covering unions, intersections, and subtraction in this tutorial. Now I highly re recommend watching this tutorial prior to this one here, so everything makes sense there. Okay, let's first talk about unions. Unions are basically nested character classes contained inside square brackets. All right, so for example, um, if for this particular pattern here, the regex pattern here, we've got the vowels, A, E, I, O, U, right? And then we've got a nested range one here, zero through nine. So we're basically just wanting to count all of the vowels and any number zero through nine, okay? So checking out the vowels here, we got one, two, and three right there. And then checking out the numbers, we got the number five and one right there. So that returns back true, five finds. Now there's also a shorthand method of doing it here, which is A, E, I, O, U, and zero through nine, right? The, the regex pattern on that, it'll, it'll know that this, because of this dash right here, that it's got zero through nine is not, you know, A, E, nine, zero, dash, nine. It's, this dash is special, you know, it's um, a special meta character here, so indicating a range. So this, this whole entire thing doesn't mean, you know, A, E, I, O, U, zero, dash, and nine which wouldn't return back five and one, because of course it knows this is a range, right? So this is kind of a shorthand way of doing it. But I kind of, I think this is more readable and I highly recommend kind of getting the habit of doing that. But you'll see a lot of people do the shorthand method. To me, it's kind of, I don't know, a little lazy. It only saves two keystrokes, so, but it, uh, it's definitely more readable like this. Um, but anyway, so it'll return the same result, five finds. And here's another example here, like, if we want to only count the lowercase letters a through z and the uppercase letters a through z, this is the shorthand method of doing it. And on Java tutorials, this whole entire string is 14 characters long. The one that it isn't going to find is this one right here. You get true and 13 finds. And then, of course, here is the, um, I'll call it the proper way, my preferred way, uh, we'll say on that, right? Okay. So that's, that's basically what a union is. Now, don't use negation in unions, and that's the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here to the subtraction portion of that, and you might be tempted to think, okay, if I do A, E, I, O, U, and then I do not zero through nine on five lines for a dollar, that it's going to find um, this A, E, I, O, U, which will be like one, two, three, right? And then not the numbers five through nine. Well, you're not gonna get a return back of true with three finds, you're gonna return back true with 12 finds because what it actually ends up doing is it says, okay, uh, this or this will return back true. And of course, because of the, the zero through nine, right? This will actually return back, basically it cannot be the numbers zero through nine. So this whole entire string here is 14 characters and what it'll return back true on is um, basically all these characters right here, not zero through nine. It almost like totally negates this, this particular, what you're trying to do here, right? And especially don't do the shorthand version of it here where you stick the, uh, the negation right in the middle of that. You just end up with some really weird, weird results here on that. You might think it'd be like a -I -O -U, then not zero, but then I want a dash or a nine, right? And that just doesn't work, right? Um, I'll show you in the, in how we'll find the number zero in that, so in the actual code. As a matter of fact, um, well, let me talk about intersections here first before we go down and run that there. So now intersections are nested character classes contained inside square brackets separated with a, you know, basically the and symbol there, the double and. So the intersection and character causes the find method to match only characters common to both character classes. Now, in my opinion, intersections are somewhat strange and somewhat useless, but I'll demonstrate how they work anyway, okay? So let's say, for example, we have A, E, I, O, U, right? And then and, and then this character class right here, A and E. Well, it's gonna return back three finds, right? Even though for vowels, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? 
And you would think that, okay, we want this and, but what does this mean? This just means, okay, we're only going to find stuff that's common to both of these classes. So here's a class right here, a character class. Here's a character class right here. The only ones that are common are A and E. Now we don't have any E in Java tutorials, so we're only going to come back and find three, um, three finds, okay? That is absolutely no different than how we just done this in the first place, right? So you can kind of see that's what I'm talking about, useless, and I'll demonstrate that in the code there. Um, here's kind of a same situation here with numbers, right? Uh, we want zero through nine, right? And four through six, okay? So the only thing that'll intersect, or basically is common to both of those, will be four, five, and six, right? So only four, five, or six will return back true, so we get a one find, and that's right here on this number five. This number one will not return true because it's it's not common to both classes, okay? Um, here's another example, zero through nine and six through eight. That'll return back false, no finds, right? Five, so um, the only thing common to both of these is six, seven, and eight. Five and one are not, so no finds, okay? Uh, intersections is kind of what they're strange and somewhat useless in my opinion. Now, uh, subtraction. Nested character classes contained inside square brackets separated with our n with at least one character class containing the negation meta character, right? Okay, so whereas the intersection is quite useless in my opinion, the subtraction character class is quite useful in certain cases. Now, the subtraction character class is identical to the intersection, but it includes the negation character in at least one of the classes. So essentially the same thing, right? But when you throw in the negation character, it becomes very valuable. Let's take a look at the pattern A through Z. Now, for example, I've got the uppercase A through the lowercase Z. This will include all of our uppercase letters and lowercase letters, okay? So if we only wanted to pull out the consonants, then um, we could say A through Z, which would be much better than going like, for example, B, C, D, F, G, you know, and that sort of a thing there, right? So we could do this pattern here, and then we want to negate out any A, E, I, O's, or U's, right? And of course, you know, I probably should have done uppercase A, E, I, O, U in there too as well, you know, and you'd catch that if you were, you know, doing doing something real live there. But anyway, um, so this says take all the characters, A through Z, uppercase and lowercase, and exclude out any uh, vowels, right? So we get, uh, on that particular thing, we get seven finds, which are only the consonants, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? Notice we didn't get the space or any of the vowels. So that that is where the subtraction can come in really useful. All right, so let's talk about um, how do these ranges work? When I do A through Z like that, right? A lot of people think, oh, okay, that's super, right? Well, we have to come back over here. Um, this is my char data type tutorial up here. And basically, I put an ASCII chart down at the bottom down there, right? And if you haven't watched this, it's kind of, it's definitely worth it there, right? So the ASCII uppercase A is equivalent to 65. So when you're doing a range, right? And you're starting off at A, right? And you come all the way through here and you got your letter Z. What you'll notice is before you get to lowercase a, which is 97, crammed in between uppercase z and lowercase a are all of these characters right here. Left bracket, backslash, right bracket, caret, underscore, and of course a little accent there. Um, so, coming back over to the regex pattern, guess what's included in here when we do this, right? So. If, for example, if we change our matcher string to underscore and then left bracket, right bracket, and all of those are, of course, sandwiched in between our Z and our A, uppercase Z, lower A there, it will come back true and it'll do 10 finds because these actually match our A through Z pattern here, okay? So it's important to understand what the range is actually doing and how that works with the ASCII chart there. All right. Um, now, let's talk about probably the most proper way to have done this here, and that would be A through Z lowercase, uppercase A through Z, and then if we run it on, like for example, Java Tutorials here to only pull out the consonants, we're gonna get seven finds. It's going to exclude these because they are not in the range anymore because we specified A through Z and then upper A through Z, right? And then not lower A, E, I, O, U, the lowercase vowels there, right? And of course, Throw in the uppercase A, E, I, O, U, 2 as well into there, and that would work too as well. Give us exactly what we're looking for. All right, let's come down here to the source code. 
Let's highlight everything. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop here. Since you're watching part two, I know you've already got that set up and going, so we'll just pop right into this CD backslash CD Java. Right, uh, we're gonna make a directory here called characters. Oh no, uh, sorry, regex characters two. Okay, change directories to that folder. Notepad regex characters two.java, name of our source code file. Let's paste this in here and let's come down here, save this and run it. Now let's compile it first, of course. All right, let's scroll all the way back up to the top here. And, um, you know, for AIOU, zero through nine and string five lines for a dollar, right? We got our phi, our IEO, our vowel matches on that, right? And then our five and our one there. So that's all pretty good there. So our A through Z, and just showing you, you know, that the shorthand method returns back the exact same thing as, so here's the shorthand method right here. Here's the, the kind of detailed out preferred method in my opinion there, right? Same thing, shorthand here, preferred method right here, okay? Let's come down here to the negation thing, right? And um, by doing this sort of negation, basically the AEIOU, right? Um, those don't even matter anymore. It's basically not zero through nine, which comes in on five limes for a dollar, right? So basically you get your space, limes, space, four, space, and then your dollar sign. So, um, you know, the AEIOU specifying we only want those. Obviously, you know, we got an L in there, so that didn't even make a difference on that. So don't use negation in unions. Use negation and subtraction, okay? All right, and then if you throw it right in the middle of it here, you just get really weird results. I can't even explain what it's doing right there. It's so, so bizarre, okay? Once again, don't use negation in unions. Um, and when I say unions, right, I'm talking specifically about this right here, unions, right? Where you don't have a negation in it at all, right? Subtraction is basically a union with the double and in here, right? And then you can put a negation in there, right? But leaving out this double and is totally different results than what you'd get. Um, you know, this is this would be totally different if it had the and in here as opposed to the other there, right? Okay. Um, so that's basically the point I'm trying to drive home on that. All right, so um, here is the, uh, in my opinion, you know, the, let me bring that back up here, right? Um, the intersections, right? Did those where basically demonstrating kind of how pointless they are, you know? Um, they only found the A's because that's the only thing in common between, well, we have A and E in common right here. Right, but they're all the only A's in Java tutorials, so I've only found the A's there. Um, and of course, this demonstrates the exact same thing, right? It's like, okay, I don't really, I don't know why, but anyway, whatever. Um, and then you can see uh, zero through nine and four through six, right? The five is the only thing they have in common because four, five, and six, right? So five lines for a dollar, zero through nine and six through eight, that returns back no matches found. Okay, so now under the negation, which is which is pretty cool there. So on the first first thing where we're just doing uh, uppercase A through lowercase Z and not A E I O U on Java tutorials, we get back all of our consonants J V T T R L and S, right? No spaces or anything like that. Now when we do that exact same regex expression right here on Java underscore left bracket tutorials right bracket, right? We actually end up getting you know, the underscore, the left bracket, and the right bracket back. And that's because those characters are sandwiched in between the uppercase Z and the lower A on the ASCII chart. All right, um, on to the next one here. Uh, A through Z, lowercase, uppercase A through Z, and not A, I, O, U, right? In string Java tutorials, we get, um, why do I got so many spaces in here? Oh, I see. It's just, it's such a, a long string. See, it's like wrapping around there. But anyway, this, this is all part of the same, same thing there, right? We get J, V, T, T, R, L, and S. Okay. 
All right, so, um, and then basically, you know, that's just kind of more of the proper way to do on, on that. So anyway, um, that pretty much about covers most of the, and what really covers all the character, character classes for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this off screen, get rid of that, and I don't really have any final thoughts on this one here. The next one I'm gonna be going into uh, talking about some of the other meta, meta characters and what they mean and um, some, some other stuff. We'll just continue on with some more Reg X stuff. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.